there, but we have two birthdays. <clears throat> One right now, today, and it's mine. No, no, it's uh, Mary Kashaka. So happy birthday, Mary. And Amy will have one soon, so Friday. Friday. Thank you for that. Also, by way of announcement, uh, there will be no class tomorrow night. I shall be gone to Florida doing a conference for several days, uh, and some of the rest of us will be going. <coughs> so um, you're free to just go wild <laughs> for Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's pray. Father, we, we desire that your spirit would be with us today and lead us and open our hearts and our eyes. And <clears throat> Father, I, I uh, want to share what you tell me to share, but I want it to be in seed form so it can go deep within them and come up in your timing. You, you give the increase. You know when the seeds come up, Father. Some seeds come up in the fall or late fall and some in spring and some later on, but all in your timing in us. And so we, we don't look at the seasons. We trust in you. We look to you. We don't try to figure everything out in our minds that will be shared or that is shared. But we say, speak, Lord, and we will hear. You speak, not Randy, but you speak, and we will hear. We love you, Jesus. And, Father, we love you, and we ask you to do it in his name and for his sake. Amen. Um. Turn with me, if you would, to Philippians chapter 3. <clears throat> and uh, Philippians 3. And we will start with uh, verse, <clears throat> verse 3. And verse 3 is... Um, extremely important to the things that he will say after this. Um, and he is, um, what Paul is actually doing in chapter 3 is that he is uh, taking what he shared in chapter 2, which related to Christ and his death, and he's showing how he applied that to his life and made it real or made it his story, not just Jesus' story. And it's very specific. I mean, it's really good. If you look at chapter 2 in light of, yes, Jesus, and made himself of no reputation and this and that and all that, and then you get over here in Paul and you see that, you know, all that he does, it lines up. And um, it's pretty powerful because um, we... A lot of times we hear things about Jesus and his life and the way that he was, and, and we go, well, how, how will I ever get that? And yet you get it. You get it by the Holy Spirit, and you get it by the Word. So beginning with verse 3, <clears throat> For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Jesus Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. Okay, so this is, this is going to be his theme now for the, the third um, chapter. And he starts it off by saying, we are the circumcision. Okay, so, so of course that relates to, to the Jews, that relates to Israel, that relates actually to the promise or to the, well, to the things that God shared with Abraham. And and so we, we take this as him saying, we the Jews are the circumcision? Is that what we're thinking? Well, Paul is a Jew, but you know, Paul was sent to the Gentiles and the Philippians were Gentiles. So he's not saying 
He's not referring that to the Jews. He's referring to all those who have, uh, as it says in, in um, Corinthians, that through Christ's death on the cross, it was the circumcision that cut off the flesh. Well, the way I'm reading this, and again, I'm happy to present my view and happy for you to say, nah, it's okay. <laughs> Because, you know, we all have to hear from the Holy Spirit. But the context of this isn't saying we're the circumcision, or can I say it a better way? We're the circumcised. It's saying we're what was cut off. Now watch that, when because he uses this little term, in the flesh, a whole lot in here. And he's talking about his old life and what was cut off. But not his old life, like he doesn't mention drinking and going to bars and doing all this kind of stuff. He talks about religious stuff. He talks about the highest order of religious stuff of his day that he cut off, that it was circumcised, and his life in that. And he talks about, you know, but we worship God in spirit. And then he starts talking about, you know, that loss so that he may gain Christ as his righteousness and his life. And I mean, just, just the concept of that's pretty cool, isn't it? I mean, and, and it's really cool to, when you look at it in light of his words. So, so let's take those, those first couple of words there. For we are not the circumcised, but we are what's cut off. We're the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Jesus Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. Doesn't that sound like what it's saying? That there's no confidence in the flesh. There's no confidence. In, and he'll build on that. So, you know, you don't have to just go by that one sentence. There's no confidence that he has in what he was before even as a Jew, which is funny because he's saying what got cut off was the Jewish stuff. So that he could just, it would be about Christ. So that it's neither, you know, neither Greek nor Jew, bond nor free, male nor female, but Christ is all and in all. Also in Colossians. Well, that's a pretty powerful, that's a pretty powerful re reality if that's what he's saying. That he's saying... And uh, we read it in one of the other classes, circumcision availeth, doesn't avail anything, but a new creature that you're, but what is the new creation or what are you as a new creature? Well, you are a vessel of the life of Christ, of the nature of Christ, of the living one that they worship afar off. We worship in spirit, which, which is in this sentence. And our heart is with him, not with a religion. Okay? Some people can call it a religion because it looks, we gather together, we read, we read a, a book, you know, uh, we, we pray. We, but that's not our religion. That's what we do to him. I want to know you. We pick up the book and we go... Holy Spirit, open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. We, we are those that when we pray, we, we're trying to reach his heart. We're not just, oh God, you know. Um, um, well, have you ever heard a child pray sometimes? Sometimes they're really good, better than ours. And sometimes it's, oh God, help Aunt Susie, you know, and help us to have a good day tomorrow and, you know. <laughs> well, praise God. I believe, I believe he hears those prayers. But those are very earthly, very my life, and really pointed at a God far away instead of I'm the circumcision that was cut off and my way and my thoughts and my mind. You'll get, it'll get into all of this. And um, I want you, Jesus. I want you. I want you. Okay. 
And he'll build on this in, in special ways in other, other books uh, that maybe we'll get a chance to look at tonight. Okay, so he says, the important part is that we are the circumcision, uh, that our worship of God is in the spirit. Um, we have no confidence in the flesh, and that's verse 4, though I might have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he have whereof, he might trust in the flesh. Notice he keeps talking about the flesh, and, he, he'll, and he's about to, again, three words down, mention circumcision again. Okay, so, you know, if I, take, if I take one thing here, and then I put something in the middle, and then I put the same thing on the other side, I call that a sandwich. <laughs> I see a sandwich here, because in verse 3, the first five word, fifth word there is circumcision, and then you go down, and um, in, the, in the middle of that, he talks about no confidence in the flesh, and though I could trust in the flesh, and then he uses circumcision again as, a, as the deal. So this is, so we need to eat this sandwich. <laughs> Amen? We need to not just make it a, a, a teaching or a, some scripture in the Bible. <clears throat> All right? So if, I, um, if any other man thinketh he hath whereof he might have trust in the flesh, I more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel. So here he goes. Everything he's going to name off is not, not what we would call sin, you know, but we, what we would call the height of religion. Okay, well, can we start cutting off the height of religion in our life and just get to the Lord? Make him our pursuit and our desire and the thing that we're, that, that when we think of the Lord, we think of the Lord, <laughs> not the periphery things. And our life is involved with the Lord, not with, you know, uh, well, I teach children church and I do this and sometimes I'm involved with the worship team and da, 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 and all that kind of stuff. That's great, you know. I mean, that should come by Jesus also. But it should all come by virtue of a, of a, of a offering of him. And somewhere in here, maybe I didn't even have that scripture in it, but <clears throat> it is there where he talks about it being by Jesus Christ. And he's talking about coming through us. Um, so circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews. Dude, I don't even know what that means, but it's, that's, a, that's a super Hebrew. <laughs> he must have had superpowers and he gave it up. I don't know. But anyway, so... Um, as touching the law of Pharisee. So, you know, now we look at the word Pharisee and we go, well, then he was a bad dude. But everyone back then looked at him as the top religious, the people that had it together, the people that really were in touch with the Lord. So what a shock for him to say that in case some other Pharisees are reading this and going, you know, our whole heritage is based on being a Jew and our whole heritage is being of a certain tribe and our whole heritage is, is what God raised up in the captivity. Synagogues, Pharisees. And <clears throat> so, As touching the law of Pharisee, verse 6, concerning zeal persecuting the church. Okay, so, so he's, he's highlighting that as one of the good things. He is. He's, he's saying, in the realm and religion I was in, I was a good Jew in that I persecuted and attacked whatever was not true. You know, because it riled me because it's, it's just wrong and I have to do something about it, you know. I've told you all this story before where one time I was 
upset somebody shared some stuff and I knew it wasn't true this a long time ago before I was even in the ministry I, and I you know and I you know someone else said something and I said well we need to we need to stand up for the Lord you know and later the Spirit of God said to me I don't, I don't think we need anybody to really stand up for us we're pretty we're pretty secure you know, we're not, this hasn't really affected us what this guy said at all, you know. <clears throat> and, um, but I was, you know, zeal, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, you know. And um, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. All right. And I think he's exaggerating a little bit. I don't know, but I mean, you know, blameless. You know, you have, that means you kept all the law perfectly. Well, maybe he's talking about the the laws pertaining to being a good Pharisee. I don't know. So I just admitted to you as your teacher, I don't know everything. <laughs> so. yeah, I, I don't blame you. Run, run, buddy, run. <laughs> All right, so um, <clears throat> touching the righteousness of the law, blameless, verse 7, but what things were gained to me, so he's talking about those were gained to him in his life and in his religion and in the realms of um, the culture that he was in. He was, uh, what did it say in Galatians? He was out distancing his brothers. It was talking about his pursuit of the Jewish religion, and he was, he, he put it in terms of the actual Greek words there are like a racer, and he's going faster than they are and looking back, well, meh, you know. Uh, he was out distancing his brethren going after this, and yet even there he, he goes, but, you know, when it pleased God to reveal his son in me, not just to me, so that I know there's a Jesus, but in me. And it's God revealing what in him? His son. I know, that's another class, firstborn class. But that's, it's, it's always there. It's always there. <clears throat> so, um, but what things were gained? So, so, gain was a big deal to him. The question is, is gain, even if it's, I mean, particularly if it's in things of God, is gain the goal or is Christ the goal? We have to ask ourselves that. Because gain can be our goal. You know, you can, some, somebody can really get in the word, really pursue the Lord and say, oh, I, did it. I, I want to know the Lord. But really what they're saying is I want to get so full of the word and everything that, you know, I can, I can be a minister or I can do this or, you know, I can refute somebody that doesn't, you know, whatever. Paul is basically, and we hadn't got quite to it yet, He's basically saying, my pursuit is the Lord. And I'm leaving trappings that appeared to be that, but whose emphasis was not the Lord. And not after him. And not a heart that had him first. That actually was a secret deception held within the bosom of him trying to be something higher than Higher than anyone. If there's one more that you want to be higher, it doesn't matter. You, you, you don't have to say higher than everyone. You can just say higher than that person, and you're still the same things working in you. All right. So, <clears throat> but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss. There it is. For Christ. <clears throat> okay, loss for Christ. Well, you know, what are we what do we put in that category? What did I give up for Jesus? I gave up my CDs and my cigarettes and my you know and he 
He said, thank you, I, I smoke too, you know. <laughs> and he never listened to your CDs either. Because <clears throat> those were gained to you, those were special to you, but they were not special to God. And so you're still thinking in terms of what's important, but you're not thinking what's important to God. He's giving up everything that put him with his family, with everyone else, that put him in a situation that looks like he's failing God and the family. Right? He's leaving his heritage to become, in the eyes of God, what? the greatest minister of the true word of God that the Bible, New Testament, was filled with what he had to say. Right. But who knew that in his family? Or who knew that among the Pharisees? Or who knew that in the Jewish religion? And did he wave that before them? Do you think he ever said, hey, don't you know? I'm a big shot with God and y'all aren't. Good way to get killed. <laughs> No. You can't wave that flag and, and say you have a heart after God because you're doing the same thing, but instead of doing it with the Jewish religion, you're doing it with this new thing. You, you just seek the Lord, and you let whatever chips fall, wherever they fall, you're, I'm just with you, Lord. <clears throat> uh, the, you know... I mean, I, I remember one time, I, it was like the Lord was saying to me, well, you know, there was a couple of options here. He says, well, what is your preference? And I said, I looked at him and I went, you know, I don't really have a preference. Just what's in your heart. Whatever comes by your hand, Father, I'm, I'm okay with that. You know, I just, well, what about this one? This, is, this one could turn out bad. If that's where you want me, then I want to be with you. A lot of times we make decisions not to be with him, whatever he chooses. We choose, like Lot in that other class, we choose the best place, the thing that we think is going to benefit us the most. And, you know, usually the things we choose thinking they're going to benefit us end up taking us back, tearing us down, you know. Just be with the Lord. Lord, I don't have a preference. You point, I go. I'm with you. I love you. And if you do it that way, you are moving in your heart. You do know that because you're, you're going, I, I'm with you. That, what great words. I'm with you. I'm with you. And if he says, or someone says, you mean it doesn't matter to you? You say, yeah, it's, it, it matters incredibly to me that I'm with him. That's, that's the driving force. That's the thing that, that, that fills my heart with joy. That's the thing that keeps me going with, with passion in my heart, that I can be with him that I can be with him in little things, right. in medium things, in big things. Most, most Christians are trying to be with him in the big things. Mm -hmm. You know, well, if we're going to have a big outreach, I'm there. You know, <laughs> you know if we're going to do, uh, do uh, short-term missions, I want to go. <laughs> but what if he says, well, I want you to go to... Uh, I ran and preached <laughs> Christ. Go. Are you trying to kill me, Lord? <laughs> He's going, yeah, if you're dead, if you've reckoned yourself dead and you're with me and you go, whether by life or by death, you'll glorify me. Would we be okay with that? Well, if we're not yet, we will be because we will so fall in love with him that that's what we'll want. <clears throat> okay, so 
The things that were gained. What's the next two words after that? To me. Those I counted loss. I did the counting loss for Christ. You can say, Lord, make me like this. Well, I can do stuff in you, but you're going to have to count it loss. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. Okay, so the knowledge he's talking about here is what he shared in chapter 2. <laughs> this, this way, this life, this, the, what he saw in Jesus. And, and he's not saying, well, I, just, I would like to be introduced to Jesus. You know, he's already saved and in the family here. He's saying, the things I outlined in chapter 2 of how you were, I want to know you. And I saw how you made yourself with no reputation. You became, a, 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 as a man, when you were God, you became a servant. Then you became a criminal. You did all of it to die for us, for others. So I, I, I want that. So what's he, what's he do? As soon as, after he's finished with two, he starts throwing stuff out of the boat like Jesus did. Yeah, he did. So when he gets down to this point, and he's talking about gain and loss and everything, and I, I counted all loss if I could know chapter 2 as life in me. That is, that is awesome because it hurts a little bit. Ow. <laughs> but it's the Lord, and it's good. All right. So um, <clears throat> The knowledge, the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. So he's the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, is not talking about some deep pockets of truth about Jesus. <clears throat> it's talking about his crucified way, his heart, his his selfless giving, his extreme selfless giving that Paul calls excellent. It's excellent. Excellency of knowing that in me. Okay. <clears throat> well, so he, he describes two, he describes all that as Jesus. In three, he describes it as Jesus too, the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, by whom and for whom I have done this. And not having my own righteousness, we'll get down there in just a minute. Um, all of this coming from him, his death, his way, his giving. So let's look at that a little more then. The, the last part is, for whom I suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. Now y'all, y'all, everybody here know what dung is? Well, if you ever worked on a ranch, you know what it is, you, and you know why you're supposed to wear these things, boots. Paul, I can see him, jeans and boots and, you know, pearl buttons, walking through the ranch, everywhere he went, cow poop. He says, all that was gained to me is like cow poop everywhere, and I don't want to step in it. You know, I don't want to step in it. I don't want to step back in my old life. I, I am the circumcision. I have no confidence in my flesh. I know what I'll do. I must be the cross being the circumcising tool. I must have be cut off. I must have my flesh, as it were, cut off in that sense. <clears throat> so, uh, verse 9, and be found in him. Okay, so do you see he's making a transition here of <clears throat> I don't want it to be me. I'm counting, I'm counting that loss 
I'm counting what was gained to me as lost, that I may win Christ, but now he's talking about and be found in him. This is more personal than just gaining Christ in the way that we would think of gaining Christ. This is gaining Christ where you're in him and he's in you, and this is, this is, this is a thing that Jesus continually, continually referred to. You are my body. I am in you and you are in me. I, I am the true vine. I, I am in you and you are in me. He constantly was giving examples of what he called real life. What Jesus called real life, the real way that God is. Know you not that the Father is in me? You know, he'd say stuff like that. You know, Philip, have you known me so long and not known? The Father is here in me. It's the Father who doeth the works. <clears throat> okay, so... He's ready to move out. Well, that's good. That's, I mean, I'd, I'd say most Christians can read this and, and sort of think they've done this first part, when in reality they've just counted loss, some of the things that were important to them, like some of the things I described or whatever, but they were never circumcised or become the circumcision themselves and cut off. That thought never came in their mind. They're getting rid of the stuff they think causes the problems. Right. So now he's moving into not the negative side, but starting in verse 9, where he wants to be, what he comprehends as the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, and what he com com uh, comprehends as uh, true gain, that, that I may gain Christ, okay, yeah. to be found in him, not having mine own righteousness. There it is, okay. So, as touching the righteousness of the law, blameless, okay. So what Paul figured out and why he's saying this is that he said something in the Old Testament, and that is, that God said, all your righteousness is as filthy rags. Okay, he didn't say all of your, your sin and your bad stuff is as filthy. He said your righteousness. You know? I mean, you, you know, when that hits you, I remember when it hit me, I went, Whoa, I've always read that as saying all of your sin and everything is just filthy rags and I need Jesus. He's saying all, everything that's good about you and not having mine own righteousness. Not having my own. I stand before you, Jesus, either in your righteousness or not at all. So um, he could have said uh, not, not being righteous, but righteous through what you did at the cross. Very theological. <laughs> not having righteousness, you know, not having it like a baby or something. Not, not having it, um, set that baby down and come over here, and, but I'll have... Um, uh, the righteousness that you provided. But he didn't say it. He says, not having mine own, but yours. So which is, the, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Okay, so it's, a, it's not um, a separate thing from Jesus. And maybe we'll get into that with scriptures down there, but where he says that Jesus is made unto me wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption so that he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. It's always the Lord. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. It's not my, it's not give me or let me get rid of my righteousness, though I'm still here, and let me take up the, what you bought and paid for over here. Okay, now I'm righteous. It's let me get rid of me, and let me come over here, and now you are my righteousness. And he gloried in that kind of stuff. That was big stuff to him. 
because it was very specific. It was very pointed. It's pointed to Christ and him crucified. It's pointed to a person. It's pointed to a reality that is only found in him, not just by his hands, but by being found in him. Amen. It's in him. I want to be found in him, Amen. not having mine own. Big difference than that other way. Um, verse 10, that I may know him. Okay, so, so now Paul has been ministering for many years now. And it could sound like, well, I don't even know him. No, he's, he's born again. He's of God. He's in, the, he's in the ministry. He's doing all this stuff. But in chapter 2, he seems to have grasped knowing him beyond what he did in terms of salvation and more in terms of who he is. I want to know him, and he'll be specific now. Are you ready? This is the areas he's going to know him, okay? I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. He didn't say, I want to know him in resurrection power, which I've heard many people preach. I want to know him and I want resurrection power. He didn't say, I want resurrection power. He said, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. He's not even talking about his own. Paul's not talking about his own resurrection. I mean, it's significant because we, Ephesians tells us that we were raised up and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He hath, as the word there in the King James, it means it's already done. His view is radically different than many where he's still making it about Jesus. Okay, here, his resurrection. He doesn't stop there. Uh, and the fellowship of his suffering. Okay, so what is the thing we usually do? We usually go, we got all of our sufferings, we got all of our problems, we go to Jesus and we, we lay them out before him and this is this and there's this <laughs> you know and I just I came here I just want to fellowship with you in my sufferings <laughs> it doesn't say your sufferings it says his yeah. you know it's his it's always it's him it's his it's about him it's he's he's alpha and omega the beginning and the end the first and the last he is yeah. He is all and in all. Christ is all and in all. And we're fooling around with all kind of religious things and missing the mark. To hit the true mark is to, is to have that heart that just says, I want to know you. I don't want to know, you know, I, I believe it's valuable to know the scriptures because, because Pharisees knew the scriptures. Paul was a Pharisee, and he knew the scriptures like crazy, and the Holy Spirit came down on him, and that's what he opened Jesus up to him in the scripture. So know the scriptures, but don't gain any righteousness by it. <laughs> Amen. All right. And then the final one, being made conformable unto his death. His death. Wait, it didn't say I want to know his death. This is different. The first two were I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. I want to know him in the fellowship of his suffering. But this is I want to be made something. Are you all ready for that one? Do you want to be made something? You know, you hear it all the time, the scripture quoted, and it's wrong. The truth will, it will set you free, and it doesn't say the truth will set you free. It says the truth will make you free. We need to be made conformable unto his death, okay? How do I know that? Because it says it right here. <laughs> you know, I didn't write that. I didn't write it. And because I didn't write it, and I believe that God wrote it, then I want it. You know, people, I've heard people say, I want, I want every promise in the book. You know, every promise. I believe in the, the whole Bible from Genesis to the maps. Do you know Jesus? 
Do you see Jesus there? For God's sake, you know? And you, if you want all the promises, how about being made conformable to his death? Well, I don't want that. Well, that's in your Bible, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's ridiculous. <clears throat> All right, I would love to take you through, and I think I'll, you know what, I'm going to just try. <clears throat> uh, so this may be a little fast, and I will tell you this, that you may not get all of this, but I, uh, I've already prayed anyway, and I always believe the Lord that these are seeds, and they will go into you, and they will be beneficial. So I'm going to go ahead and address this. Romans 12, 1 and 2. <clears throat> okay. Romans 12, and verse 1 and 2, starting there. <clears throat> I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Okay, so this is, this is Paul, and this is to another group. This is the people at Rome, the Christians that are at Rome who, you know, well, anyway, and so he's saying, I'm, I'm beseeching you not by the commandment of God, but by the mercies that brought him to the cross, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Okay. So he begins to describe this presenting of your body as a sacrifice, as a living sacrifice, uh, and he calls it holy and acceptable unto God. Okay. Presenting your body holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I won't in, go into all that. You'll hear it somewhere else. And be not conformed. So, so he's saying, make sure I got this. And thank you all for setting it up where I can easily make my way. He says, present your body. A living sacrifice. So there's the cross. There is always the cross. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, which is your re reasonable service. And then he says, be not conformed to this world. Okay, so we'll put the world down here. Be not conformed to the world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, so here is the renewed mind. Bad habit, I almost wrote RN. <laughs> renewed mind. So he's saying, present your bodies. Don't be conforming to the world, which is you're not going to present your bodies as a sacrifice to God. But by the renewing of your mind, present your bodies as a sacrifice. Amen? Or am I making this up? <clears throat> okay, so, and he says, um, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, transformed into this thing that presents its body. It's a transformation. It's in his image. It's an altar. It's the, the Christ. It's the sweet savior to the Father, always and forever. And you're not going to get it any other way. You can't, do, you can't do children's ministry or worship or anything else and it be a sweet savior to God unless it's Christ. And not just for Christ. Okay. <clears throat> and that's why you present your bodies to him so he can... Rise up, out, <clears throat> okay? Um, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay, well, what? I wonder what he's talking about there. He's talking about presenting your bodies <laughs> and being your, having your mind renewed to that. That's the good and acceptable and holy will of God right there. All right. So, uh, so I'm kind of jumping fast here. I want to go to Hebrews 13. So if you can turn there with me. Hebrews 13, beginning with verse 10. <clears throat> Ready? <clears throat> Hebrews 13, 10. We have an altar. Oh, uh, what? Yeah. What? Lord, are you always going to talk about this altar stuff? <laughs> you know? Yes, he is. 
We have an altar where they have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought to the, into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. Okay. So basically he's talking about bodies being presented because in this case, the, the being in the body had no free will and it had no spirit of Christ in it, so they presented their bodies. But we have a mind, and we have his mind in us, and we are able to do that. So we have, we have an altar that they don't have. Amen? Amen? Okay. So, um, uh, verse 12, wherefore Jesus also, of course he would say, wherefore Jesus also, because it's all pertaining to him. Wherefore Jesus also, this is verse 12, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered out with, outside the gate. Let us go therefore, let us go forth therefore unto him. Okay, so forget going outside the camp. Just go unto him because you'll always end up at the altar. And you'll always end up with him. See? You will. You, you can't go wrong with Jesus. <laughs> Somebody said, Randy, is that all you preach? I said, that, that's not enough. <laughs> um, uh, bearing his reproach, for here we have no continuing city, but we seek one. Okay, so here is the deal. This, this altar, the shadow altar is these animals were brought and they were sacrificed and da-da-da-da. But we have another altar, and this altar has to do with wherefore Jesus. This altar has to do with us going unto him to his altar, the cross. Okay, going unto him. And our bodies being given still, but not, not like on an altar and burned up like that, but a living sacrifice. Okay, so I can't tell you all the examples of how that looks and everything, I, and I don't think that we're ready to do that anyway. But I can tell you that it involves Christ in you and that nature and you being conformed unto his death, and therefore your body will follow sway. All right. Um, 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians 3. Now, remember, we started this with Paul talking about in Philippians that we are the circumcision. We're what's cut off, um, and we have no confidence in the flesh, and I could have had confidence in this or that, but I don't, okay? So in uh, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 17, <clears throat> if any man defile the temple of God, okay, well, what's the temple of God? Him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Okay? So the temple of God is the body. Remember the bodies of, present your body, the, the bodies of beasts that didn't have the spirit of it, but in our case we have another kind of altar. That altar is based on the spirit of Christ. Okay? So <clears throat> if any man defile the temple, if any man defile his body, that he's supposed to live in and die in and give in and bless and live through us. Him, him shall God destroy. Okay, stick with me. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Okay, but he's saying that your body is the temple. And if you're defiling it, okay, but don't. Don't jump to conclusions on what defiling it means because you're probably thinking all kind of stuff that you do and it's not talking about that. Okay, let's, so let's follow the context. <clears throat> Let no man deceive himself. If any among you um, seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool. Let him become a fool that he may become wise. It, all of the, the, the wisdom that went into the Jewish religion was a shadow, and it did not fulfill the altar that God wanted, the cross. It did not. It was a failure of that because the, 
and you can read this in the Old Testament because the sacrifice they offered, God, after a while, said, I hate your sacrifices. I hate your offerings. I hate all this, you know. And I remember the first time I read it, and I said, God, you told us to do that. You know, I, we, but, I mean, that's what I thought, you know. And he's, he had to explain to me because I asked. And he said, he said because you're... Uh, because what they're doing is it's not my spirit and it's not a sweet savor to me just for them to throw a piece of meat up there and say this is it and you're just, you know, it's destroying a body because it's a wrong altar. It's just beasts. <clears throat> okay. So, um, so now he's talking about wisdom and foolishness, Okay. For it is written, this is the uh, middle part of verse 19, for it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness, and again the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise that they are vain. Therefore let no man glory in men. Okay? Um, <clears throat> in, in the Old Testament, God got sick of their sacrifices. It was a wrong altar. It didn't have the right spirit. It didn't have what God wanted. They were defiling the temple because yes, yes. the because they were supposed to the temple was made to house Christ crucified. Can I put it that way? The giving of the lambs all the time. Yes. Okay, every day, give me the lamb, <laughs> give me the you know, and so these sacrifices, these beasts, were defiling the temple. So God said, "I'm going to destroy it. I'm going to destroy the temple." Remember 1 Corinthians 3, <laughs> which temple I will destroy? He's just talking about what he already did in the Old Testament, but this is, the, this, is, this is more important because this is us, and this is us just living as Christians and go, well, oh, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have eaten that. I defiled God's temple. He's going, you're so off. It's so wrong. You're so off from my son and the realities of an altar that we have to eat that they know not of, you know not of. You see what I'm saying? So he's saying, so what did I do? I destroyed the temple. Okay, well, that goes back with Paul when he's talking about um, the flesh. We're the flesh that was cut off in the Old Testament, or Israel. We're the flesh that was cut off. And so the, 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 what's going to happen to the temple? What's going to be destroyed? God said, if you defile it, I'll destroy the temple. Amen. So he destroys the temple. Right? Am I trespassing in your stuff? No, I'm just <laughs> so, um, he's saying, you know, Paul's going, I have no confidence in the flesh. I want what's not, I, see, it, you don't have to worry about the temple or you don't have to worry about the body if the spirit's okay. Right? right? Yes. That's what all these scriptures have been pointing to Amen. is that God wants his son, he wants the lamb, he wants the spirit of that lamb to give himself on a daily basis in, and not just being Christian, but Christ in you being the hope of glory and for it to be a sweet savor of God. And when it's not, then he's looking at those who do have that and, say, and looking at the others and saying, you know, they have an altar that you don't know of. And he's, then he says, if you keep defiling the temple, I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to, so what did he do? So their whole life was in the body, but not the spirit of the life, okay? So, so he says, I'll take away the flesh. I'll circumcise you. So that you can not no longer go by being a Hebrew of Hebrew or of the tribe of da 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 da, and you can do this and get all your boasting in that. I'll take you away captive, and there are some of you who are going to find the real me. And they did. They did. And when they did, what happened? God said, let's go back and build the temple. Let's present our bodies, let's make it practical. Isn't that good? It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, I started this little part saying, I realize that this is a lot fast. <laughs> uh, but it is so good. 
And, uh, you know, just so um, Chris and Jason, y'all know this, I think, but you can always get a copy of this, right? We can give these guys copy. If you ever want a copy of any of the teachings to go back and listen to it, you can get a free copy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Praise God. I'm glad he, you know, just thinking about this because I know this was a lot and it was quick. But um, the seeds of so much of the Lord were in these verses. And it built and it just went on and on and on and on. And I had to jump over even parts of it and just, just make sure I hit all the high points. But it's, it, there really is this thing of, of uh, an altar that we have an altar that the priests don't know about. And we live at that altar. That altar is in us. And the, and the, and the sacrifice, he's not a beast. He's willing. He's pure in heart. He's self-giving. And he's that way. He's supposed to be that way in us. So when God says, don't you know that you, your body is the temple of the Lord? He's got a lot of history to, to draw from. And we just go, oh, praise God. My body's a temple. Whatever, you know, whatever. But we, it's very, it's almost insignificant to us on a certain level. I mean, we, when, if you're under the law, you're going, oh, well, I wouldn't want to, you know, but that, you know, that's not going to help. The law's not going to help you in this situation. It's going to get you in worse trouble. The life of Christ, that's, you're literally the place I've chosen to let my son be offered on the altar of the reality of the cross so that the lamb will continually go forth to me. And then he says, you know, he goes, you know, he didn't say if anyone destroys the temple. He said, if you defile it, I'll destroy the temple. And that's exactly what he did, see. Uh, what did he call Nebuchadnezzar? My servant? My what? My tool, yeah. Because that, that's the hand of God. But you see, God can bring back all that stuff or, or bring, it, bring back the true, Amen. not the shadow, the real. He can do all that. He can take care of all that. But he's trying to get us to the spirit of the thing. And the spirit of the thing is Christ. And the spirit of the thing is the lamb. And the spirit of the thing will sanctify the temple. Doesn't it say that? It does. It does. And so, um, and, and I know we're going over a little bit, but so that's why Paul started off and he says, we're the circumcision. This would be like Israel in captivity in Babylon going, oh my God, we're the circumcision. <laughs> we thought it was a, in the flesh thing and we're the flesh thing. And then, you know, Daniel and Ezekiel and those guys started getting it. And they're, you know, um, uh, and Nehemiah and Ezra, and they're all realizing the whole thing. And the thing that's able to spark them to go back, to, to, to go back, was we're going to build the temple. We're going to give him a place. Get it? We're going to give him a place. And they, they rejoiced. And, you know, and some who had seen the former temple, the great one, we're mourning, and some we'd never seen it. They're going, this is great. They didn't have anything to go by with that. They're just going, this is, this is what it's all about. Yeah. Hallelujah. I know. I get excited. <laughs> yeah. destroy the false religious temple in us. He 
will do that, right? Because right, right. 